Stop shooting everything on auto. Yes, I'm talking to you. You know yourself. Switch that camera to manual now. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make your footage look well exposed like this compared to... <laughs> Hi, my name is Tilsent. I'm a lazy filmmaker and I like to talk about cameras, lights, and color. Let's talk about it. Most people feel like shooting on manual is tough. It's really not. So we'll talk about the exposure triangle. There are three things that make up the exposure triangle. ISO, aperture, shutter angle. So the ISO is how sensitive your sensor is. Your camera, your phones, everything operates by light going into the lens, lens sending light into the sensor, then the sensor recreating the image. So you don't want your sensor to be super sensitive. Whatever camera you're shooting on, you just go to Google and say, what is the native ISO for Sony A7 III? Simple. Once you know the native ISO of your camera, don't ever go over that native ISO. So if your native ISO is 800, for example, whatever the case might be, try to make sure your ISO is not set anything higher than that. You can go lower, it's fine. The lower it is, the cleaner your images. But if you go higher than your native ISO, then you start to break your footage. And breaking doesn't mean... All right, so I'm going to create a scenario now where let's say it's dark. I just assume that it's dark. It's not yet dark here, but I put the uh, aperture down to, you know, give me a sense of darkness. Or better still, let me use the shutter speed to cut down the lights so I can see I have that blurry background. Give me a second. Then take up the shutter speed. Shutter speed is the one on this side. So let's say it's as dark as this and I really want to, you know, expose and I have to bump up my ISO. So let's take the ISO all the way now. Because right now, let's test. If I stand in front of the camera right now, you can hardly see me. And this is not what you want. So let's say you don't have any lights on you and you're tempted to increase your ISO to expose the footage. This is what would happen. I'm going to bump up the ISO now. Bump the ISO up to, which is ridiculous because I would never do this, to 1600. It looks decent because on your small monitor screen, it looks very decent. It looks like, yeah, this is all right. I can expose this. This makes you feel like, yeah, you're well exposed. Yeah, we got the shot. There was no light, but our camera handled it. You're lying to yourself. By the time you put it on your computer, you're going to see noise. And I'm very sure you will see noise. You see noise, I mean, you don't see noise. So that's what happens when you have to force your ISO, you know, increase your ISO to like a ridiculous amount, way over your native ISO. You start to introduce noise and it's really not advisable. So when you don't have light, when you're in a place like this, for example, let's say it's dark and there's no light, instead of bumping your ISO up to the craziest amount, why not move the person to somewhere maybe under a street light uh, where there's a source of light and then try to use that light to like increase your exposure a bit. I would always advise you introduce light and keep your settings as minimum as possible than trying to force the camera to like see. Because when you do that, again, you break the image. So with everything, when it comes to the exposure triangle, there's a pro and there's a con. But when you increase your ISO, what happens, you allow more light, you see your shot becomes brighter, but as you're increasing it and you're enjoying the benefits of a brighter shot, you are also introducing noise to your footage. So you have to be the one to decide what you're trading in terms of image quality over brightness. Get it? The aperture is how much your lens can open or how much you can close. Your aperture opens like this. This is fully open, this is closed. When it's closed, you can see just small light coming into your aperture, closed. When it opens, you can see. So let's say an aperture 1.2, that's fully open. That means you can take in all the light in your scene and your camera has more light. And again, like I said, with more light, your shot becomes what? Brighter. When you close it, you are reducing the light coming into your shot. And as you are reducing that light, your footage becomes darker. There's something you trade off also. When you open your aperture, you introduce the shallow depth of field. And that's what everybody likes. If you look at your phone, actually, you will see when you're filming on cinematic, you'll see f2 point something. I don't know what the exact number is, but precisely what the lens does is, the lens fully opens, so it focuses on what is in front of it and blows out the background. So when you open your aperture to the fullest, you get two things. You get more light, then the second thing is you get is what? More blurry background. So right now I'm filming on um, ISO 200, and my shutter speed is on 50. 
and I have my aperture fully open to 1.8. So this is what happens when you use an aperture fully open. You have that sharp focus, the person in front of the camera or your foreground is very sharp and the background is out of focus. Some lenses do not go down to 1.8. My lens, this 50mm lens I'm using right now on the Sony A7 III, can go all the way down to aperture 1.8 and that's why you can see the blur. But it's not every time that you want that. Think about it. You're probably at Mount Alaska or you're probably on the top of a mountain, which I would never find myself there. I don't like to hike. Um, or maybe you've gone to this beautiful place in Paris, or you are in somewhere like you're at a destination, you know, you've taken a trip abroad and you're taking a nice video. And then you are the only thing in focus. Everything is blurred out. So you don't even know where you are. You can't take in the environment because you are fully opened your aperture. So there are times um, there's a place where you don't want to use that. So what you have to do is to close your aperture. But as you are closing your aperture, you get more focus. Things will be more focused. You'll see the background more, but then you'll start to lose light. So I'm going to change it now. I'm going to change it to, let's say, a 4.0, and you can see the difference. What I would do is try to maintain the same exposure. So I might have to bump up the ISO um, just a little bit to make sure the exposure is the same. You can already see that while I'm bumping this up to like 5.0, um, things in the background become more focused. So I'm going to like increase that, take it to let's say 5.6, and let's see the difference. So I took the aperture up to 5.6, and you can already see the difference that the background is more in focus. But because when I changed the aperture to 5.6, this is closing the lens. At the same time, I lost light. So I had to compensate by taking my ISO up, boosted it so I can see the same level of exposure. The more you close down your aperture, the more you get more things in focus. So this might be essential if I'm doing a news feed and I'm talking about guys. So I'm on the road right now in Bradford and you can see there's traffic building up in the background. I'm in this beautiful park and it's so lovely. It's so cold out here, but I just wanted to give you this demonstration to let you know how aperture affects your footage. Then the last one is the shutter angle. Shutter speed is how slow or how fast the sensor opens and closes to capture light. Video is made up of pictures. so. A 10 minutes video is probably like a million photos just stacked up. So it's like a frame after a frame after a frame. So I'm filming right now on 25 frames per second and my shutter is set to 50, which is the rule of thumb. So you double the number of your frame rate. So if you're filming on 30 frames per second, then you double the shutter speed, which is 60. If you look at my finger, there's a very good chance that you can see the blur. So that's what shutter speed does. The camera is not able to capture as fast, so the camera is capturing just little trails of my finger going up and down. I'm going to stop the shot now and change the shutter to, let's say, a 100, which is like double or 50, and I'll do the same thing. And let's see if you can see my fingers, like if you can see them freeze in action better, okay? So right now, I just changed my shutter speed to 160, and before you could see my fingers, you know, a bit blurry, but now if you look at my fingers, let's see. So right now, I can't see what you're saying, but you should be able to see my fingers even a bit clearer now. The blur should have been reduced now. The camera is basically capturing faster. So the camera is opening and closing way quicker so you can capture the frame quicker. So I'm going to take the shutter to like, let's say 250 now and just to see the difference. So right now I've cranked up the shutter to 320 when you increase your shutter, which helps you to capture things sharper in motion you're going to lose light because then you are cutting down on the light. So cut down means reduce in cinematography lingo. So that's the trade-off for shutter speed. Can you see my fingers better? Yes. So right now I had to compensate, I had to increase my ISO to like 1,250, which is not ideal, but I'm just sharing with you so you can see the pros and cons of everything. So right now I want to show you what happens when you decide to use a slow shutter. So I've set my camera to shutter 110, that's 10, instead of 50, which I would ideally use for a 25 frames. Then the ISO is on 100 because I have to keep the balance. And then I am going to be in front of the camera. And you can see, you would see me looking blurry. That's what will happen. You can see me looking blurry. So this is what's happening. The shutter is closing and opening so slow. So it's like this and this, like this and this. While it opens, I've already made my motion and completed it before it closes. So it's not capturing me in real time. So it's basically sluggish. 
That's the way I would explain it to you. And you can use this for like artistic purposes. You might want to shoot, let's say traffic and you want to shoot cars, you know, trails of cars, their, their backlights and stuff. That would make sense. But if you're not doing that, then you want to keep your shutter the double of your frame rates. So I'm taking my shutter back to 50. And uh, I have to go up on, exp on ISO to balance out the exposure. Like I said, it's a trade-off, it's a triangle. You turn one, you turn the other one. So right now, everything is back to decent exposure and it should be fine right now. So right now I'm doing the same things. I'm jumping around. This should look good, this should look decent as compared to when you were filming on shutter speed of 10. So if your action is fast moving, you want to increase your shutter. But then as you're increasing your shutter, you are losing light. So you need to compensate by either bringing more light or I'll be forced to like increase my ISO. But don't forget, as you're increasing your ISO to you know, compensate for the loss of light, you're also introducing noise to the footage. So if you have to push your ISO beyond its native ISO, then I would advise you to increase the light instead. So that right there is the exposure triangle and I know it sounds like a mouthful and yes, it might be like a mouthful at times, but the more you start practicing with these things, the more you start like experimenting with it, the more you start learning how to compensate. You know, you have to let go of something for something. There are other tools as a cinematographer that you can use to compensate for light and you don't have to like, you know, for example, you don't have to lose your depth of field or you don't have to lose your motion blur because for me, I like a little bit of motion blur. So my camera is usually set to 50 shutter and my frame rate is usually like 25 or sometimes 23.98 or 24, you know, all those industry jargons that I don't need you to bother about right now because when people watch your footage, they're not really going to ask you what ISO, what shutter speed. I mean, people do, but most people are not going to ask you about those details. What matters is how they feel when they watch your footage. What matters is the experience on screen that you create for them. You just need these tools to be able to manipulate things. But I'm not going to ask you what shutter, unless the shutter decision you made or the ISO decision you made has impacted your footage and now I can see it. So that's why you want to play within the rules and also break it when it's comfortable for you. That's it for today. That's the end of the video. I hope I've been able to teach you how to achieve perfect exposure or maybe close to perfect. And also I hope I've been able to demystify the entire idea of exposure or exposure triangle. If you have questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section. And if you want to see more videos like this where I teach you things not from the textbook, but just basically as a guy gisting with another person, telling you about camera terms and breaking it down to everyday terms, then let me know in the comment section. My name is Tissent, I'm a lazy filmmaker based in the UK, and I like to talk about cameras, lights, and color. See you in the next video, bye.